What do you think of my quarantine beard? It's filling in nicely. So these uh, last... This well, last week or so I've been really been paying attention to all the, the cases here on this uh, Wikipedia page because here we get all the updated numbers of the, the number of infected people that has the coronavirus. We're living in strange times, man. And what I really like about this site is that they have some really hardworking people at Wikipedia that update these numbers. I, I guess most of them are, uh, are volunteers. If you look at the, this data, for instance, for China here, nice figure here, you see that so all, all the bars added up together here, all the different colors, they, they are uh, all the confirmed cases. So here you kind of see what I was getting at in the previous video, that this indeed fits quite nicely with an Esker, I, I, I'd say. And here you also have a bunch of data, as you can see for January and February, you have all the numbers and the growth. And the little snag here is this, uh, this gap where China started to include also uh, clinically um, diagnosed people, where they just looked at the symptoms without, without actually testing for the virus, which gave a, a bump in the number of uh, cases. But still you see sort of the, the S-curve goes long and then it plateaus here. I, I tried looking into uh, building some sort of web scraper to, to, to get this data quickly, but all, all these um, uh, country specific pages, they, they change and they, they have a bit of a bit different styles so here. If you go to the United States, you have to go all the way down to the bottom to get to the statistics, I, I believe. Yeah, here it is state-wise and here is the uh, and uh, yeah a lot of the countries haven't gotten far enough to actually be a good fit to logistic function uh, as of now. A few weeks ago I made uh, this uh, Jupyter notebook where I started fitting to the the China data first with an exponential function uh, using stats models here you can have a look at it if you like it's on my github uh, and then afterwards with the um, logistic function. So what I, th I thought we'd do now is that we will um, just try to build a Python script with these ana analysis, these bits that I, I made here, uh, and make them a bit, clean them a bit up, and then try to fit them to data. Yeah, to make it more easy. Okay, so here I've made a, um, a JSON file. So here it is quite easy to simply update the data. That's what I've been doing for the last few days. So here I have Italy, I have Iran, and I have uh, China. Uh, that's it for now, but uh, I'll keep at it as the data is updated by more people regrettably getting infected with the uh, COVID-19. All right, so let's get back to our script where we looked at the logistic function. Okay, so here we have the logistic function, which is uh, what we'll be using a lot. First, let us uh, import the JSON to have a look at it. What we'll do is we'll, with uh, a file path, here we'll write the name of the data file called coviddata.json and we'll read as file a data equals JSON dot load uh, this file. So let's just try to run that to see if it works. Yeah, and it it, uh, it did run, so that's good. Let's have a look at it. So we will... Uh, so what we get out of this JSON file, it's a dictionary. So we could, um, for instance, print data and then go Italy. I'll run that and uh, this is the data for Italy that it printed out. And I can do that for each of the three countries that you saw, China, Italy and Iran. So if we do for the key, we iterate over the keys in the dictionary in data, we could uh, plot each of them and label them with their country names, like so. We'll show a legend and we will yeah, show the figure. So here you see the real world uh, data. And you have to remember that this is um, a number of days since the first incident. So, so they're not, it's, it's not the correct date, but they're fine. And you see, we have one problem with China right here that I mentioned. The, uh, the, the, the health officials suddenly started um, classifying people as infected by symptoms as well. So it jumps up to a lot and we see that Italy is really growing fast. Here it's sort of starting at an S-like curve and Iran is a bit, bit off. So what we'll do now is we'll import a um, function from SciPy called um, CurveFit. 
and we'll fit each of these uh, functions, right? So we don't need uh, this anymore. We need to write make an x array. So here we'll say that our y is data and then some country and we'll start with uh, with Iran. And then we'll say that uh, the x's should be the length of uh, this y and then we can apply the the curve fit it gives us some parameters and also some errors which we want need so we'll use curve fit for the logistic function the our put input our x values and our y's then we can plot this thing and see how it looked so We'll plot x and y, and these are our observation points. So we'll call this observations and oops, plt dot plot, and we'll also include our fitted curve, right? So this should be our logistic function of our x's and the parameters and I will splat that so these will be a, b. In fact, before we do this, Let's simply print out the parameters to see how they look. So these will be our uh, A, B, C and D values, right? Yeah, and there you go. So here we see the A, the plateauing value, B, the constant term, and we had C, the, the slope, uh, also D, the, the um, horizontal shift. Uh, so these we can use now in our, our function like that. And uh, we'll label this as well, fitted curve, like so. We need a legend and let's show this wonderful creation. Yeah, and there you go. Here, as you can see, this is not perfect by any means right now. We see we have some skewness here and here. So our ran the data there isn't perfect, obviously. So what we should do is we should put all these operations in a function so we can quickly do it with, with any, any country, right? What we'll do is we will create a new function here, def fit data to function, where we will input some y's, we will input the function that we are going to fit, and I think that's everything we need. Some x's as well, yeah. Now we could do almost exactly what's going on down here. We'll use this thing, but we'll make it a bit general, so we'll just input the function we want to fit here, right? And then we have an x and a y. And then we want to plot it. Yeah, so we'll just use this, right? Yeah, there you go. And now we will, to make this a bit more general, we will make this, uh, do this main, if name equals main trick. So that we can use these functions in some other program, right? So first we open some data and then we call our function fit data to function. Well, if it is, and then we plot it, but yeah, let's, let's see, see if it works first. We call fit data to function. What do we need? We need a function, which will be our logistic function. First, we need an x and a y and a function. That's, that's everything. Go. Oops. Ah, and as you can see, it's the same, same uh, figure. So now let's try to do the same thing. We'll add, we'll add one more thing. We'll import from, to, to see just how well it fits, from scikit-learn.metrics. We are going to import R2 square, which is a good, goodness of fit measure. So the last thing we'll do, well before we actually show the thing. Yeah, so we'll see that the Y fits is this thing. And uh, then we'll use that here. And we'll print the R2 score, which will be uh, the actual values versus the fitted value values. So let's uh, just try it again like that. So on here you see that it printed out some uh, some values. So this is the, uh, it's 99.7% fit, which is, which is good. But um, yeah, if you were a stat statistician, you would have a huge problem with this. But let's just ignore that. So what we can do now, we can just try some other country. So let's do Italy. We'll run it again. Ah, superb. Yeah, so that's good. Great. 
What we'll also add is we want to know when this thing uh, starts to plateau, right? And then we need some sort of uh, functionality that takes, that computes uh, how long until the growth is only such and such, right? We'll write a new function, I think. I'm not sure any of what I'm doing here is good practice, but uh, let's just uh, let's just do it. Pla plateau, plateau, there, yeah. Uh, so we'll input some y values and function, mm, but it needs some parameters, yeah. And then we can use the function inside this, I think. And uh, then we'll have a diff. So. What, what, what the diff value is, is when uh, the daily growth is less than this value, then we say that, okay, uh, now the growth is small enough that we have plateau, right? Uh, we could just print out the A value, which is the asymptote we're going towards, but then we wouldn't really know when we would reach it, right? Yeah, actually, we would never reach it. So um, let's just um, say that the confirmed cases now, is uh, the last value of y, right? And the confirmed uh, then, so yesterday, would be the second to last value. And then we'll count the days it takes from today until the increase isn't very large. You'll see what I'm getting at now. So the value now is, yeah, we'll input an x as well. It's the last x value. So while the confirmed now minus the confirmed then is larger than the difference. So we'll keep going in this while loop until um, this is not true anymore. We'll increase, increase the number of days and then set the confirmed then to the confirmed now. And then set that the confirmed now is equal to, yeah, and then we'll input a function. This function, which will then it's supposed to be evaluated at now, which is an x value, so the number of days since the first incident, plus yeah, these this day thing, and then we'll splat the parameters. Yeah, and then we get the value, a new confirmed now value. And what we'll do lastly is we will turn the days, uh, which is the days until we reach, well, until this is no longer true, so then the, the growth has sort of um, well, plateaued, yeah, and the confirmed now var variable. So know how many people is infected then. I think that should work. So we can try that with Italy. We can try b both fit data to function, uh, but before we do that, we try the plateau with the x, the y. Yeah, we don't have the parameters. Okay, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll we'll do all this, but then we'll also return the parameters, right? And then we can do this one before. So now we'll we'll see a figure first, and then we get the prediction for when the the virus will sort of stop spreading, right? Because here we can then say that okay, and we also want these parameters. This is an extra value, right? Params. And uh, the function is the logistic. Was that the no word correct arguments? Oh yeah. And then we'll also say that well, since they have a lot of cases in Italy and it's a large population, so we'll set the, uh, this variable to 100, I think. And then we get days and confirmed now. So this is on y value. And then we'll print in days, days until growth okay let's um, also use this so oh sorry you can't see this there 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 and we'll say that the diff is equal to the diff that makes sense until growth is less than and then diff so what I have there is yeah like so and then we also print number of cases is and then there we take the confirmed variable. Let's try it. 
Okay, so first we get our, uh, our nice uh, graph, close that and it should continue. And yeah, and here you see a printout. So for firstly we have a very nice fit and we say that in 31 days, so approximately a month, uh, until the growth is less than 100 people and then we'll have uh, 130,400 yeah, cases. And we'll take just the, the integer value of this, I think. Whew. Cool, right? So now we have a nice little toolbox. Let's do one last case for China, which won't be a good fit because it has that weird kink, I think. So here's the figure. We have some stuff going on here, which is yeah, not so good. And then we have uh, the prediction. Well, this data isn't, I haven't updated this for the, um, the last day. The, the goodness of it is still quite good. But I think this is around where China is now. So that's it for this time. Now we have, as I said, just said, we have uh, a nice little toolbox. Whenever the coronavirus in the world progresses, add it to the JSON file and then we can uh, predict with a simple logistic function, kind of, how long we have left of this, uh, this pan pandemic. That's it for me. Thank you and take care.